So our first question comes from at Taylor Release 01, who's written in several times and is actually a student writer on College Express. So thanks so much for writing in to us, Taylor. Uh, and the question is, what is the best time to study abroad? That is a good question. Midnight. <laughs> yeah. Good one. Yeah, after you. Yeah. That's Wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are a bunch of different options. So uh, I studied abroad the fall of my junior year. A lot of colleges will build it in so that it's during your junior year. So you have some classes at um, school and then some classes abroad before wrapping it up at home uh, in your senior year. But there are also a lot of schools that will have campuses where they let you study abroad your first semester of freshman year. Uh, fun fact, a lot of places do that and offer you the option freshman year. Uh, to study abroad because that means that they have housing for everyone. A little mm -hmm. secret tidbit. Uh, mm -hmm. They might not have housing provided for everyone on campus, so they say, we have a campus in, I don't know, Madrid, uh, that you can study abroad in your first semester. So if, you, if you're if you ready to do something like that, go for it. Uh, I did it, like I said, fall of my uh, junior year, and I thought that was the perfect time, uh, at least for my major. And I know a lot of people who majored in certain, um, I think CSI, um, were uh, computer science informatics, not crime scene yeah. investigation. <laughs> yeah, I know digital forensics yeah. was huge mm -hmm. example. And they, yeah. um, they had it like built in so that you could take classes in Dublin that specific semester. Uh, so really just kind of look, looking at your classes, seeing what's available and what your specific major is built around as well. So many schools offer programs like that too where they, like, specific majors, they'll take you abroad and they just plan the whole thing for you. Yep. They got the housing, mm -hmm. classes, you don't have to do any of that. My school didn't have that. I'm sorry. I did go in the spring of my junior year, though, and I feel like junior year is, like, a huge time, really time for people to go. I don't, maybe because it's, like, you're mature in college mm -hmm. and, you're like, not a newbie, like, a freshman or sophomore, <laughs> but it's also, like, not yeah. your last year because sometimes you just want to be on campus a few times yeah, last true. year. I feel like that's, that's so good. true. Like with your first and second year, you're just like meeting everyone, making friends, and mm -hmm. then you don't want to miss your senior year because like you have fun activities. So junior year is like the perfect time to go. I don't yeah, know if yeah. I think so. It's a nice yeah. break too. I feel like by yeah. junior year, just like yeah. Gotta get I off also <laughs> liked going in the fall because I worked all summer. So mm -hmm. by working all summer, I had funds to spend on things like groceries and travel mm -hmm. and. Um, like other life expenses like I forgot a raincoat I don't know why I went to Ireland without a raincoat but I did so I had to go buy one <laughs> it was it was Constant. not the best decision that's I, I'd also throw the wrench in everybody's talking about like personal wise but uh, also depending on where you're studying and if you're going specifically for your major and you have a professor in mind some of the professors won't teach certain semesters uh, so again, at Champlain, uh, we use it as an example all the time. But, yep. uh, one of the campuses was Montreal, and it was a video game studio, and so I believe it was Ubisoft. I could be yeah. not right about that. Uh, but like there was very much a drive for kids to go when this professor was there because mm. he'd worked on certain games and they wanted to learn from him. Uh, yeah. So that kind of jumped up the increase for that specific time, too. Yeah. But I agree that junior year is probably the most comfortable yeah. Um, you, as Mackenzie mentioned, you've matured and you kind of know your schedule. <laughs> College at this point. Yeah, right. um, You know what you can handle and yeah. um, when to have fun, but you know, still get the stuff done. So I think junior year is a nice fit just from a life. You're also like used yeah. to being away from home at that point. Too, yeah. yeah. But like going to another country is just another step. Yeah. <laughs> But my cousin um, wanted to study abroad, and he is an engineering major, and it was really hard for him to find a good time to study abroad because their courses, like, you have to match up the courses that they have at the schools when you go abroad to the classes you need to take at your school. And engineering it can be kind of a tricky major to match up because the classes are so specific. So he had to go in the summertime, which is also a big option for people like that who can't do it with their major. Or, like, I know nursing majors do that a lot, too. Yeah. 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 That kind of goes into, like, what I was saying earlier about I wasn't able to study abroad because, like, there were certain classes that I had to take at my school. They're, mm -hmm. like, upper-level ones, like, specific to the school that I needed for my degree. Um, so it was hard to fit that in. But one cool thing that Brian did is this thing called... Um, 
it's like SIE. It's basically like your sophomore international experience. So you go for like 10 days over like a break or something. So if you can't fit that in because of like your major or because you transferred, like it's just another option, you yeah. know, if like the timing just doesn't work. So yeah. Yeah, I was about to say we're talking about like semesters abroad, but there are other yeah. options as well for study yeah. abroad. Like you could do summer courses abroad. A lot of um, colleges will have that. They have... Um, alternative spring breaks where you get to go to oh, yeah. abroad and do some volunteering stuff. So it's mm -hmm. not necessarily like study abroad, yeah. but um, they're also, I know that Champlain had, and they didn't offer it while I was there, I would have taken it, but they had like a photography in, in Italy class, mm -hmm. um, and my brother took really a theater cool. in Greek class, yeah. so he got to go um, after, it was after the semester had finished, like he'd done his finals and everything, and they took a trip as a class to Greece, and they went to all different places. Uh, Champlain had one there where they got to go to Cuba wow. when it was more difficult to go to Cuba even. So, um, <laughs> that's so yeah. Cool. So, like, things like that, you know. Again, that's pretty... A lot of people do, do it junior year um, just because... I think it's also just easier to bring like twenty year olds abroad than eighteen year olds. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <I> don't know. <laughs> it depends on where you're going, too. Like, eighteen's just... You're an adult at that point. Yeah. Don't need that part. <laughs> I mean, technically, some places are 16 year adults. So it's yeah. Like, but yeah. it's like, I don't know, just the energy, <sighs> I feel. I mean, I was, I was <laughs> also, I was very energetic when I was 20, but I was also like a more reserved, energetic than I was when I was 18. Like, I was like, yeah, I'm abroad, but it wasn't like, I was, <laughs> I don't even know. Please describe your emotions. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm abroad, but I wasn't like, I'm going to go do all this crazy stuff. Like, yeah. I knew more who I was and, like, what I wanted to do while I was abroad rather than, what, than when I was 18 and susceptible to, like, everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I understand that. That's uh, not for college, but we had a foreign exchange program when I was in high school, too. And so it was going to London, and then we had um, the brother's school coming to ours. And so ours is a boy and girl high school, I swear, not my wife. And um, the brother school was only guys. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't go to London. Uh, Emily did, though. So her exchange student that came over was 13, 14 when he came. Mm -hmm. And we were all 17, 18. <laughs> and so just the age gap was so bizarre. And like you just yep. said, handling it with like your class group at a certain age yep. and how your class molds you versus as you're older. And, yeah. A little bit more independent. Yeah. <laughs> Smarter. Yeah. Smart. I would not have been able to handle living in an apartment on my own at 18. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just me. Like, everyone's different, obviously. Mm -hmm. But They do have options to study abroad when you're in high school. They do. Some schools. Some schools. There's, like, some programs you can do, maybe alternative spring breaks. But, again, yeah. that's, like, very dependent on the kind of person you are, how independent you feel, how comfortable your parents are sending you. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah. But yeah, yeah, if you want to get a jump on it, I feel like you have more, can have more time in high school. Yep. It's easier with classes. I mean, not more time. You probably have more time in college. But with classes, it's easier yeah. in high school. Uh, I feel like it was, maybe it's because Champlain had the, had the specific program to go abroad. And I, I would say if you're considering studying abroad now in high school, then uh, a good idea is to look at colleges with programs abroad, with campuses abroad, because that's going to be so much easier than later we're going to talk about different programs to choose. But it's going to be so much easier to make sure that those tr credits transfer. Like, you don't even have to worry about if those credits are going to transfer if the program is through your college. My cousin went to school in Clemson, and he sent me pictures of the villa the school owned. And it was the most beautiful yep. villa I've ever seen. I would just go to Clemson just so I could study abroad and yeah. really stay in that yeah. villa. Tons of places have campuses abroad. Uh, Champlain has two. Um, Clemson has one. Uh, <laughs> Emerson has a castle in the Netherlands, uh, which is a pretty cool program. Uh, Suffolk has one in Spain somewhere. I think Madrid, maybe Barcelona. I think Madrid because I got offered to go there. Uh, Marist has a, a location in Florence. Like there are just wow. there are a lot of co colleges of options, and because study abroad is on the rise, a lot of colleges are making more deals with uh, colleges abroad, so that it's easier to get your credits to link up. Yeah, makes sense. We had one in China, it's like right in Zhuhai, I think. 
Can you pronounce that right? Keen has one in Weizhou, China. Yeah, so I'm trying to remember Keen? Yeah. Wow. what that school was. But we did a summer program search. It's still on College Express. Yes. Do you know which one I'm talking about? Yes, I think. Ooh, racking my brain. But that was a high school one, too. Yeah. Uh, and they had it all around in one of the, the locations of China. Because I remember yeah. making the emails, and I was like, this is awesome. Yeah. And I'm way too old to go on this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Champlain also had a, an abroad program for specifically business students where they got to go to Shanghai for the summer. And it was an internship program. So, like, there are also options for that if you don't want to mm -hmm. – if you – are worried about credits transferring, see what options there are for like summer studies through your college that you could do abroad or summer internships abroad because internships are learning experiences as you can see from our last podcast. <laughs>